Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Peace out to the rest of you. This is part three of uh, the Jason Roger Pope reaction. In part two, I was pretty much telling you that he's just a sign of something, but Islam is the solution for that of which he is merely a symptom, but a very pertinent symptom and a very visible symptom right now. Part three is about uh, the, the traitor versus the enemy. This man is an enemy, obviously. Is every white person an enemy? No. I mean, that most of them aren't even interested in anything like that. But their society is an enemy to ours. Their population collectively is an enemy to our population. We don't owe any um, apologies for that, for feeling that way. It's just an understanding that we've had to reach. But one of the reasons why I'm go I went in harder on the sisters than I did on him is because everybody always takes bigger issue with the traitor than they have with the open enemy. The open enemy uh, never quite gets the same reaction, never gets to surprise you the same way that the traitor does. The traitor is different. When the traitor comes around the corner and betrays you, then, um, or comes from right next to you or from right behind you and betrays you, the surprise is bigger for a good reason. You see, people can forgive an enemy when the enemy says, I'm not your enemy anymore. The enemy can come along and they can tell you, look, this is the reason why I fought you and this reason is no longer true or I've discovered that it was never true. I'm not against you anymore. I'm done with that. You weren't guilty of what I thought you were or I didn't, uh, or you stopped what you were doing initially. Or they could simply say, I've had a change of heart. I was the one that was in the wrong. When somebody comes along and betrays you, uh, that's a whole different story. And then you don't find out about them betraying you because they turn over a new leaf and say, look, I did something wrong. I double crossed you and I want to make it right. I was wrong. I don't want to be wrong anymore. Even that's the same as an enemy coming out. You could forgive and overlook that kind of person, but you can't look at a outright traitor that you caught and say, okay, I'm gonna let this slide. In most cases, you can't do it. Now, a lot of you sisters that are hearing this, especially Miss Sincere, a lot of you sisters that are hearing this are gonna say, well, what do you mean treachery? It's not like we owe the black man anything. Well, if you don't owe the black man anything, then we don't owe you anything. If you owe the black man anything, then there's a reason for it, in which case we would owe you. But which one is it? You see, the only thing I've ever said that black women owe men is what they agree to, what they say. If they say that black men owe them anything, then they owe the converse of that. If they say that, uh, and I do say that they owe the truth. And one thing I've said that women all over owe to men, even when they're not in Western countries. I've said that they owe men the truth. They owe it to men to tell the truth about what they like in men. I know, that's not something women can do. It's hard, it's uh, difficult, it's, it's not against their nature. They don't always approach men, exactly. For sitting back and judging how men approach them, knowing damn well that we don't know anything because we're not told anything, because women ain't that obvious anyway. The city, they're, they're sitting back. Now the price has to be that, you know what, they gotta start making some approaches. They gotta start putting some cards on the table. They need to start being honest. And that's not something I only say to Western women. I just focus on Western women. That's something I actually say to women in general. I'll tell an Ethiopian woman, why don't you go ask that man to marry you? Because in their culture, they never do. And that's exactly why I put this in their face. Why don't you? I mean, there's a man you like, you want to know something about him. You're not wrong for that. Why don't you go and, you know, why don't you ask him some questions? You tied up? You got somebody? You already engaged? What's happening with that? And then when you're married, if you get married, do the same thing sexually. What's happening with that penis, bro? Straight like that. Put it on the table. Am I saying this because you're value less? No. I'm saying this because neither one is, no, no gender is just born more valuable than the other. 
but we men are socialized to where we have to have a value. And then socialized to believe that we have to keep on proving it because we're socialized to where we have to have a value. Then we're socialized to believe that we still have a negative value in comparison to women. And this is why I got on them sisters hard as hell. This is not to exonerate Jason Roger Pope. There's no question about that man being a damn devil. He could have been black as midnight and did what he did. He still would have been a goddamn devil. Then again, if he had been a brother and he did what he did, he would have been a devil who got that way through trauma more than likely. But when you white in America, there's no racial trauma. There may be trauma from something else, but ain't no racial trauma. Somebody probably did something to him too when he was young. And I hope the worst for that person too. Naturally, because I'm not exonerating the guilty and letting them off the hook. And I understand that a lot of this is cyclical, but I also want this to be understood and remembered by us. We men in general, I'm, black men I'm talking about, we black men don't deserve to be told that we don't have what it takes, that we're just um, completely unattractive all the time. Or that just basically, you just come fresh out the womb, we're just unattractive. Just right off the bat, we're unattractive. While every other woman in the world is saying, oh my God, look at all that chocolate. Even when they're ashamed to marry one, any of us or be seen out in public with us. Even when that happens, and that's bad enough, of, that's enough of an insult. But even still, when they're doing this, it is not okay that you lie collectively to a population of men and then turn around and go with not even another type of man, but specifically the enemy of you and your man. Even when he's on social media exposed by other people because he got HIV penis and he's slinging it around and he on social media bragging about his body count. And even telling some people on social media, this is what I do. I go up in them raw and I nut in them and I hope that they're gonna continue being fast with black men afterwards. <laughs> no, bro. What he failed to understand is these women that are doing that with him, they sitting up here telling brothers that they want the world in exchange for that peace leave. Even the ones that we saw in the photographs with, who pretty much all looked like they had a little bit of that hood in them, a little bit of that, that sapphire stereotype in them, glued on wigs, Look like they shopping at the thrift store to go to the club. You know them types. Breath pretty much smelling like cavities. Tongue smacking every time they talk. I told her, she ain't do that, she lying. These are the same ones telling brothers that they want all this stuff, all, they want the world. His car ain't hitting on nothing. Even if his car is new, it ain't. She'd rather an old Cutlass that's been redone and dropped down with some rims than a brand new uh, Hyundai Sonata. These, these were the ones, because I went to school with them and mostly you did too. That's who, these, that's who they were. That's why they were taking these photos like that. But they let, the thing is when I was coming up, just not being in the sun long enough for a brother, it's, that would hold them back, especially now. You know, you, you could make up for it if you spend more time in the gym, but that's just it. You you just pale now. You got to spend more time in the gym. You got to be taller than the next guy. <laughs> you got to make up for it somehow, even if she likes you. And then you see them going straight. So what I'm saying is that the treachery came not even so much from the preference. The treachery came, well, in this case, it came from the preference because he wasn't Latin American. He wasn't no type of mestizo. Dude, white. Straight W- Y T white. I know I misspelled it. That was intentional. But the point I'm making is you straighten him. He's, he's the grandson of the slaveholder. If he, if his granddaddy wasn't a slaveholder, then his granddaddy was the overseer. Some and even some sisters want to say overseers. Overseers were mostly black men. They were slaves themselves. No, actually, no. They they did have slave drivers, but the overseers themselves, that position was a common position on plantations that was usually held by white males. Then they had some slaves under them that they trusted to help them oversee the Negras. So no, his granddad's granddad was either an owner or an overseer. 
and that's where that was. Or his granddad's granddad was poor white trash that couldn't get no job because why pay somebody to do it when you can go to the master and give him a few pennies and he have one of his slaves do it for free. That's what that was about. So in, that, in this case, yes, the preference is also treachery. Because when it's another man of color, you could say, okay, well, there's no treachery involved there. No, 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 no. See, I understand now what the book Daughters of the Trade was about. I've never even read it. I can't get a copy of that where I live. But now I understand what it was about. It's about Sapphire, mad at Junebug, mad at Shine, disgusted with him. She knows he's sexually attractive to her in most cases, but she's still mad for some odd reason because, well, mostly she's pretty much mad because uh, Chad and Brad were able to do certain things to all of us, to both of us, because they had gunpowder. So she mad, and she wants to make Junebug and Shine pay for that, pay for the fact that we didn't come up with gunpowder first, okay. But then she doesn't even, they, they weren't even picking somebody neutral. They weren't picking somebody from the Philippines, from Malaysia, a Latin American. None of, no, no neutral other person of color. No, straight up masses, grandkids, grandkid. That's who they were picking. It had to be him. So in, that, in this case, yes, the very preference itself is treachery. But worse than that, it's what I've been saying all along is the treachery. It is the goddamn lying. Sisters been walking around all this time acting like they don't they ain't into white dudes And why would I have thought any different? I mean 1989 they weren't even in the light skin brothers no more Even that was out. I know Having to pay for things that somebody else did had to pay for things that they heard someone did to their friend Oh, you think we didn't grow a pan for this stuff? No, no, we had to pay for a lot of things we had never done Just like chocolate brothers had had to do before that so here we are being told what they don't like and having no reason to think that they're lying about it and then come to find out they're lying about it. <laughs> and at some point, now he, he, they let this white dude run through 600 of them. So Miss Sincere, I want you to understand that what I said, I meant yes, they could have said no because you got them running around here saying no all the time. And, and they're not wrong for that. That's okay. But... Obviously, they're saying no for the wrong reasons, and that's not okay. It's not okay when guys say no for the wrong reasons. And you're going to write back and say women don't need to justify when they say no. But wait a minute. If they don't need to justify when they say no, then um, apparently you even, you even write back and say they don't need to justify when they say no. But then you'll tell some other guy we don't need to justify when we say yes. Actually, no. Men and women have to justify that to a certain extent. This goes for both of us. If I'm out here just boning anybody, you have every right, and you know that I'm doing it, you have every right to say, okay, now I know you're doing it, there's proof of it, you a loose dick nigga. Your morals are low, what's wrong with you? You got every right to say it if you know that I'm doing it, and vice versa. But what's going on here is that we're being told pretty much, you don't have to justify nothing, but we do. We gotta justify, hell, we gotta justify saying yeah when there's no other option. We got to justify when we travel, whether it's traveling to pay to play, which can't be justified to me anyway as a Muslim. But when other brothers have, when they travel to go uh, uh, pay to play, they got to justify that, not because they're tricking, but because they flew somewhere else to do it. Because they weren't over here tricking uh, and, and paying Sapphire the money. So instead, they wouldn't pay Rosita the money in the DR or in Brazil. Even though both y'all black, he got to justify why he traveled over there to do it. Despite the fact that even with the cost of the plane ticket, these brothers are consistently saying they get more bang for their buck. It's not even about the morality or the immorality of prostitution in that case. It's just strictly about the fact that he wasn't handing you the cash. He wasn't spending the money uh, on a villa and bringing you there to some expensive villa for the weekend. Yeah, but see, if he buys some food, she'll cook. If he buys some food, you'll sit up and turn your nose up at the food. And maybe it's not you, Mr. C. I'm not saying that. I understand that you were a victim of something yourself, but you got to understand that your crew, your society, your demographic is exactly like I just said. That's why these brothers are traveling. Other brothers, they're traveling, and they're traveling to go uh, look for a girlfriend, not pay to play. They're actually looking for girlfriends, a relationship. But when they go abroad with the cost of the plane ticket, they go abroad, and what are they getting? They're getting a better relationship than they can get in the United States. 
lawyers and doctors, no less. What do they do when they wanna get married? They go to these places and they get married. You got guys going to the Philippines and getting married. Getting married. You got brothers, a lot of Muslim cats, they'll go to Malaysia, Indonesia, or Morocco and get married. They ain't tricking. They ain't even looking for just girlfriends. They're looking for a commitment, a marriage. And where do they get better marriages? I know because I married a woman in North Africa. She was a black North African. She was pale like I was. That was one of the, I mean, hell, I was never happier. I'm only recently as happy as I was with her because I married again. And the second time I got married, she's Muslim and she's not Eidos. Naturalized U.S. citizen, but she ain't Eidos. And so every time I've been happily married out of three times, it was with nine Eidos women. And as you've heard, if you heard any of my other videos, Miss Sincere, you know that the only reason I'm not with that second wife, the first one that was not Eidos, the North African, is only because her government was tripping and they wouldn't legalize it and it became dangerous for us to move around together in public. That's all that was. So at the end of the day, not just you, Miss Sincere, but anybody that agrees with you, any sister that agrees with you, at the end of the day, you can't have it both ways. You can't sit up here and talk about empowering young girls, and then when they make a decision like this, then all of a sudden, they're only victims, which they were, but, they're, but they have no agency in it. They have no responsibility for the decisions they made. You said, thank God I had parents. If your dad was Muslim, then why would you even be tempted to make a decision as stupid as theirs? Unless, of course, it's just that you have a sex drive, which is normal, but then that's what sisters need to come out and admit. Look, we're making decisions, and, and, the, sec, the, and the outright sex drive is going to influence them. Okay, great. Now, what's sexually attractive to you? Be honest about it. Don't lie about it. Tell the truth and stick to it. That's what we brothers are saying. We're not getting that. We ain't getting this from sisters. The ones that were in that video, or the ones that were in the, uh, the photos with him, these are the same ones that these are the same ones that were telling us at a young age, not even just not even uh, high school per se, but even in college, about what we didn't have and what, how why we didn't qualify and what good we weren't. Same ones telling us all this stuff, and here they are in this video, knowing about each other. You think they don't know about each other? They knew about each other and what was going on, and they each one still decided to lay down with this nigga with no protection. Yeah, I called him a nigger because niggerdom is not specific to African-Americans. It never has been. At some point, you got to start looking. You got to say, look, you can't have it both ways. You can't sit up here and be all empowered simply because uh, somebody is not your type, but then you were victim because physically speaking, he was your type or rather not even physically, but just socially speaking, because this is a cross eyed white dude. So what? He's your type now. If a cross-eyed white dude is what y'all want, y'all need to come out and say, we don't want black men no more. We want white dudes because they got money and we're for sale. We're that materialistic that we can be bought if he's white. We're so materialistic that we can be bought if he's white even without any money. The price of us is whiteness. The price of our submission and cooperation is the man's whiteness. Come out and say it if that's what it is. Women love to say, well, men just won't come out and say what they want because they know we ain't going to buy it. Actually, in real life, how you doing, sir? Actually, in real life, you know doggone well that if you come out and say what you want, we ain't gonna buy it. So when you say that uh, I simply have no mercy at all, well, when it comes to treachery, yeah, you're right, I don't. And we are a people at war, so we cannot afford such treachery, especially when you were turning, when you were betraying your people, not on behalf of a neutral party, but you were betraying your people on behalf of specifically the enemy. So during bondage, they can pin you down and force you and put a gun to our head if we decide to protect you. But then during freedom, you decide to voluntarily run back into their beds. So if it's treachery, when some of us go even for other women of color or even within our race, but just different nationalities, and it's okay for you to act like that's treachery and call it treachery and call us traitors, then it's okay for me to sit up here and call these women traitors for what they did. And that's why I went harder on them than I went on this dude. See, he got the arrest warrant out on him already. Granted, look who he had to victimize in order to get the arrest warrant out on him, but he's got that already. 
And you know, if he's put in general pop, some brother's gonna take care of him. Who's gonna sit these sisters down and tell them what they need to know? Obviously, it ain't gonna be you. Hope this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.